Hi, this is Dr. Andrea Furlan here, and today we're going to talk about myofascial pain. Well, myofascial pain is very, very common. What happens is, is muscle pain. And muscles, we have muscles everywhere in the body. We have more muscles than we have bones. And normal muscle doesn't hurt. If we apply a little bit of pressure to a muscle and it hurts, it's because something is wrong. Another problem is also that a lot of people don't know that they have myofascial pain. They have pain in their back, in the neck, in the shoulders, and they think it's a problem with the nerves, the bones, the tendons, and it's not. It's a problem with the muscles. So let's talk about it today. Today we're going to talk about muscle pain, and the medical term is myofascial pain. Myo comes from muscle, facial comes from the fascia. Fascia is the membrane around the muscles. Muscle pain is very different from skin pain. So for example, if we have an injury to our skin, we know exactly where it happened. And this is because the skin is so innervated, it's our protective system. And the skin has receptors for pain, for pressure, for heat, cold, and we know exactly where it is the injury. With muscle, it's different because muscles, they don't have a lot of receptors for pain. So if a muscle pain, if, if muscle is hurting, the pain is vague, is diffuse, is hard to localize. So what are some of the causes of muscle pain? Muscles can hurt for a variety of reasons. One of them can be inflammatory process. We call this myositis. And then we have to find out what is causing the myositis, but that's not so common in pain clinics. Another one can be injury to the muscle. If there is a hematoma or a bleeding inside of the muscle, that can cause a severe acute pain. Myopathies are genetic or hereditary conditions that affect the muscles, but they are not usually a cause of pain or chronic pain. It can also be a side effect of medication. For example, some of the medications used to lower cholesterol. It can also be withdrawal of some medications. For example, if a person is using opioids every day and they skip one dose, they may have muscle aches all over their body because that's a symptom of opioid withdrawal. Muscle pain can also be radiating from other areas of the body. So if a person has a nerve injury at the level of the spine, we call that uh, radiculopathy, they may have pain radiating to the muscles, and the problem is not really in the muscles, but that's where they feel the pain. It can also be deficiency of some vitamins or nutrients. One of them is vitamin D, and it can also be some hormonal problems, like problems with the thyroid can also cause some muscle pain. And finally, there are some chronic infections, for example, urinary infection that is ongoing, untreated, that can also lead to chronic muscle pain. However, in pain clinics, the most common types of muscle pain is either fibromyalgia or myofascial pain syndrome. Fibromyalgia, I will not explain in this video here because I did another video just dedicated to fibromyalgia, but in summary, fibromyalgia is not a disease of the muscle, it's a disease of the pain system. The person will feel pain all over their body, in all the muscles of their body, but that's because the threshold to feel pain is lower in fibromyalgia. So what a, a person that doesn't have fibromyalgia would tolerate a lot of pressure to the muscles without having pain. In fibromyalgia, that same pressure will trigger a pain and that's because the threshold is lower and we need to fix the pain system instead of fixing the muscles and it's interesting that exercises exercising the muscles of the body all over the body is one of the treatments of the pain system because that will send healthy impulses to the brain and will retrain the brain again how to feel pain normal again so even though fibromyalgia is not a disease of the muscles Exercising the muscles, moving the muscles, is one of the treatments for fibromyalgia. But today we're going to talk about myofascial pain. And myofascial pain is a pain that is localized in the muscle. So normal muscle doesn't hurt if we apply pressure or if we move it. But if the person is moving the muscle and it's hurting, or if we apply pressure and the person feels pain, that's not normal, maybe it is myofascial pain syndrome. 
So what's going on in the muscle that causes this myofascial pain syndrome? Well, it's not the whole muscle that is hurting. In fact, if we apply pressure to the muscle, the whole muscle, we may find that there are some areas of the muscle that the person will not feel pain. But when we are moving our finger and we are applying pressure, for example, and we find one point that is very tender, and the person will say, well, that's my pain, you found my pain, then we call that a trigger point. What's going on inside of the trigger point? The trigger point is a very tiny, tiny area of the muscle. What's going on is that the tiny area is contracted, there is no blood flow. If there is no blood flow, there is no oxygen. If there is no oxygen, that area cannot relax because the muscle needs oxygen to relax. So it's squeezing the nerve endings and it's squeezing the receptors for pain. There is no blood flow. There is no oxygen, it cannot relax by itself, so it's perpetuating itself. And what are some of the causes of myofascial pain? So it could be repetitive movements, it could be a bad posture, it could be exposure to a cold environment, it could be other trigger points that are activating trigger points in other muscles, we'll talk about that. It could be emotional stress, we all carry some stress in our muscles, we tense our muscles. It can also be because the muscles are weak or they are short and they, when a person tries to use that muscle, the muscle is not ready to be used. So if a person develops a trigger point in one muscle, what happens is that muscle will not want to work, will not want to be contracted, will not want to be stretched. And what happens is the muscles around that one will have to work over time to compensate that muscle that is not working properly. And then the other muscles around will start having trigger points too. So the pain starts spreading. That's very common that uh, people tell me the pain started here, but now I have pain the whole region here. So myofascial pain is a region of the body that is hurting and the pain is diffuse, it's difficult to localize, and when we put pressure in those points, we find the pain, the pain that the patient is complaining about. How do we diagnose myofascial pain? So there is no imaging, no laboratory test, no blood test, no electromyography, no muscle biopsy that can detect the trigger points. It's basically with our fingers. At this point in time, the best technique that we have is palpating the patient, palpating the whole muscle, finding the taut bands. It looks like a rope inside of the muscle. And inside that taut band, we find the areas of tenderness. And the patient will tell us, well, that's my pain. You found my pain, doctor. That's usually how we diagnose. I have a colleague of mine. He is developing a technique using artificial intelligence. He's teaching the computer to read images of the muscle and apparently the computer can detect where are the trigger points. So that's the future, and uh, maybe in a few years from now I can update this video with that technique, but as of today, the best technique that we have is using our fingers. How do we treat myofascial pain? So basically there are two things we need to do. One is to treat what is what caused the myofascial pain, the perpetuating and the precipitating factors, what's maintaining the myofascial pain. And the second thing that we need to do is, how can we eliminate those trigger points? We're going to talk about those separately. So for the underlying precipitating and predisposing factors, one thing that we need to see if there is a gait problem, if there is a posture problem, or if the person is doing any repetitive movement, if there is any joint instability. So we need to take some details about what's going on in the life of the person, why they're having that myofascial pain. Also, in some cases, it can be that there is a constant pressure or constriction of the muscles. That can be a uh, tight bra, it can be a, uh, a purse strap. I had a patient that uh, she was always having pain in the trapezius muscle here because she was always carrying a purse on that side and it was a heavy purse. It can also be a tight belt. So anything that is putting pressure on the muscles could be perpetuating the myofascial pain. It could also be some nutritional deficiencies. The person is not eating a proper diet. 
the person is deficient in some vitamins, minerals, proteins, folate, vitamin D. So we need to see if that's the case for that person. It can also be some metabolic or hormonal deficiencies. So we need to see if there is any thyroid problem, diabetes, neuropathies. And also, if the person is not having any psychological distress. It's very common in our society today that people are anxious, they have a depressed mood, and if we don't treat the psychological uh, aspect, the person is going to always carry the stress in their muscles and it's not going to get better. They're not going to get better. Uh, sometimes it can also be like a chronic infection. It could be a bladder infection, a intestinal, gastrointestinal infection that we need to treat. It can also be a problem of sleep. The person is not leap, sleeping well or is not sleeping this, enough, the uh, amount of sleep that they require. So we also need to talk about that. How are we going to improve their sleep? Another thing is also could be a nerve impingement in an area that is then innervating all those muscles in that area. So if we treat the nerve impingement, then the myofascial pain can get much better. And also we need to look at the environment. Is the person working or living in a very cold environment that they are also um, contracting their muscles that can also be perpetuating. So there are many, many things that we need to see what is perpetuating that trigger, those trigger points. Because if we don't treat those conditions, the pain will not go away. And then how do we eliminate the trigger points? There are many techniques that we can use to eliminate trigger points. One thing is true is if we use multi-modalities, the elimination will be much faster and more efficient. And also if we start treating the myofascial pain right in the beginning, when the myofascial pain started. If I see patients that have myofascial pain for 10, 15, 20, 30 years, that's going to be much harder. It's not impossible, but it's going to be much harder. So what are some of the techniques that we use to eliminate the trigger points? The main one is going to be moving those muscles, doing exercises with those muscles. And for muscle pain, we have to think, we need to do four types of exercise. What are those four types of exercise? Well, if the muscle that has trigger point was weak, this means that we need to strengthen that muscle. So the first one is the strengthening exercises. Also, if that muscle that has trigger point doesn't want to be used, then the muscle gets shorter and shorter. So we need to stretch the muscle. So that's the second type of exercise. We need to do stretching exercises. But also the muscles need oxygen. So we need to pump oxygen to break those trigger points. And how do we pump oxygen to our whole body? Is doing cardio, aerobic exercise. So that's the third type of exercise. And then the last one that a lot of people forget is we need to relax our muscles and we need to learn how to do this. That's the last type of exercise. So I tell my patients to remember the SSAR. Those are the four types of exercises that we need to do for myofascial pain. Then we also have a lot of other things we can do to get rid of those trigger points. One of them is the modalities. We can use modalities such as the heat, can be superficial heat or deep heat. It can also be application of ice. Some people get better, they get better from the trigger points with applying ice. Although I don't recommend that a lot, but if the person gets better, I am okay with that. Another one can be electrotherapy, the application of electricity, fans, electrical muscle stimulation. So that helps the muscle to contract or the tens that will help the muscles, sorry, the endorphins of the nerve system to be produced, and those are analgesics. It can also be application of laser. So all of these are what we call modalities. Another thing is we need to relax the muscles. That can also be done with relaxation techniques, biofeedback, CBT. It can be also helpful for CBT for sleep and CBT for anxiety. So that's excellent that if the person can relax their mind with cognitive behavior therapy or any relaxation technique, meditation, or any other breathing exercises that will relax their muscles. We can also use manual therapies, things like uh, massage, manipulation, mobilization. Those are great for muscle pain. 
Then there are also things more invasive, like putting needles on people. This is, can be acupuncture, it can be dry needling, it can be injections. In, I, I do trigger point injections with lidocaine, it's a local anesthetic, and that's to help to break that area of the trigger points because the needle will go there and will make the blood flow to wash that area and get rid of all of that contraction. I need to do that very occasionally, not in every patient that has myofascial pain because myofascial pain usually gets better with the other techniques that I just explained. I don't use botulinum toxin for injections in the muscles for myofascial pain because I don't want to make the muscle weaker. The muscle is already weak. We need to strengthen the muscle, not to weaken the muscle. And botulinum toxin makes the muscle more weak. Also, I don't, I don't use steroids for injection in the muscle for a number of reasons. One of them is that um, there's no inflammation inside of the muscle, inside of the trigger point. So there's no point of injecting an anti-inflammatory there. And also the steroids will be in less than five minutes, the steroid that we put in the muscle will be all over the body and then they may have systemic um, effects like increasing the blood sugars and I don't want to do that. So I don't inject steroids in the muscles. I may inject steroids inside of a joint or close to a tendon but not inside of the muscles. In terms of medications, oral medications or topical medications, we should avoid things like opioids because they really don't treat myofascial pain and they may cause dependence and tolerance. We also should avoid benzodiazepines, those are the sleeping pills. The person will sleep better, they will fall asleep better, but the quality of sleep will be so much worse if they take benzodiazepine, it's not worthwhile and they can also develop tolerance and dependence. And I also should avoid baclofen. I see a lot of people taking baclofen for myofascial pain. Really, I don't understand why. Baclofen is a medication for spasticity, which is a deregulation from the brain or spinal cord to the tone of the muscle. These people don't have spasticity. So I don't think why people prescribe baclofen to them. Maybe it's because of the side effects that it causes some somnolence and sleepiness. But then we may use some anti-inflammatories or muscle relaxants for a short period of time to treat myofascial pain. And I use a lot of antidepressants, like tricyclic antidepressants, like amitriptyline or triptyline, because those antidepressants, they have a lot of advantages. They relax the muscles, they give a much better quality of sleep, and they also treat some mood disorders. They treat the depression. So many of the patients who have chronic pain if they have depression, the tricyclic antidepressants may be a good option for them. It's also important to remember that myofascial pain can be a recurrent condition. You may treat the trigger points today and they may recur in a few weeks or months or years from now. So the person needs to know how to do, how to manage their pain, how to self-manage so the pain will not become chronic and also will not spread and become fibromyalgia. It's also important to note that in almost every chronic pain condition, neuropathic pain, CRPS, even fibromyalgia, arthritis, low back pain, there's always a component of myofascial pain, of muscle pain. The myofascial pain can be compounding, can be aggravating and making it worse. So we should still treat, try to treat the myofascial pain component. So as you see, there are many different things we can apply to eliminate the trigger points and we should not use only one of them. Maybe we need to use a combination of them to get rid of the trigger points. And we call this the toolbox approach. I tell my patients, you should have like a toolbox where all of these tools are available to you. And maybe in different days, you're going to use one tool of your toolbox to manage your chronic pain. And please remember that this video is only for educational purposes. It's not intended to provide medical advice. If you think that you have a condition that is causing you myofascial pain syndrome, please consult your physician to get a proper diagnosis and a treatment plan for you. And if you like this video, don't forget to like it. If you have any comments, questions or suggestions, just write down below. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel and turn on the notifications so you can be alerted next time when I post a new video. Thank you for watching. Bye!